Hey guys, this is Ramos here with game one of the Gosu Coaching Weekly Tournament number two finals between Slush, he's here right uh, here at the 12 o'clock position on Lost Temple, and Tester, who is the blue Protoss known as Ksh, known as Hwani Dotsk for all. So, a little bit of, of, of confusing things going on there. Uh, Tester is actually, he, he was a, a relatively well-known StarCraft Brood War player. He, he was a 2v2 player, he was Hiva's 2v2 partner, if you know who that is. He played Protoss, and he, right now, is a coach for Istro. He is the Protoss coach. And so he's, he's obviously a, a very, very, very good player. And his opponent is Slush, who has been just dominating everything lately. Slush won the Team Liquid Invitational, uh, very, very... I hope I didn't spoil that, spoil that for you, because that was very, very recently. And he's also just been, been doing very well for himself. He's knocked Cawthon Luck out of a couple of things uh, where, where Cawthon Luck was doing very well. And, and I've heard at least a couple of people say that Cawthon Luck is probably one of the best players in beta right now. So, if Cawthon Luck is kind of like our, our version of Flash right here, then, then Slush is our version of Jadong. Which is funny because the races work out, except Slush is beating Cough and Luck a bit more than Jadong beats Flash, I do believe, in this current state of the game. Uh, we can see that Slush is actually getting a gas before his pool, and we're at 14 food right now. He's going to go ahead and, and get a 14 gas, 14 pool, which is a little bit weird, and th this is a signal to his opponent that he's going for some really, really tech-heavy build. And we do see that Tester still does have that probe in here, and Tester, in the meantime, has not gotten scattered himself. Tester does have a gas and a gateway both coming up at very, very normal timings. So he could be doing pretty much anything, and we will see exactly what he's doing shortly. After his core comes up and after he starts making some tech choices, we will probably see a core start shortly after this gateway finishes. Not necessarily immediately, he's not going to go like, oh, I'm going to cut probes and get a core really fast, but it's going to be fairly quick. And he's actually doing a very, very nice job of harassing with his probe. We can see that both players have plenty of APM to spare on silly things like harassing and defending against it. And this core is actually coming up right after that gateway finished. Uh, it looks like Tester is really freaking confident. He, he realizes that his opponent is doing some very tech-heavy thing, and a gas coming up, a second gas coming up really early for Tester. We'll get back to that in a minute. Uh, Tester realizes that Slush is... Just sitting back, he got a super light pool, he got gas before it, so Tester doesn't have to necessarily worry about getting Comet units up immediately, so that first Zealot was, was delayed a, f a fair bit. It is going to be Chrono Boosted now, but I'm curious to see whether or not we're going to see a Zealot coming out right after, and it does not look like Tester is really rushing to produce another Zealot, or, or even a Stalker right now. He's just sitting back and saving up that Court Done. We might see him go for uh, a Robo Bay, or a Stargate, or a Twilight Council, or something weird. Slush, in the meantime, grabbing a Woach Warren, and as soon as this Queen finishes, we are hopefully going to see a Lair, because otherwise he's got way the crap too much gas. And that Lair is going to be coming up right now. Come on, don't make me look stupid. Okay, never mind. No Lair. Okay, never mind Lair. As soon as I look away, oh my gosh. And, uh, I guess he was waiting for that scouting probe to get, to get out. But there's nothing else that he's going to be doing with all the gas. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Um, Tester, in the meantime, is producing a Stalker and a Sentry. And he's actually chrono boosting that. And he's got a Stargate coming up. Oh my gosh. Uh, this is going to be not in time to deal, to, to like completely kill Slush. But Slush is, even if he goes fast as possible, Hydras from this point on, he's not really going to have enough to prevent a Voider from killing that Queen, I don't think. So he's, at the very least, going to be down a Queen. And Voiders are these incredible, incredible units. A couple of Roaches coming out for Slush. He's, he's going to do, it looks like, a little bit of scouting, maybe a little bit of pressure, but Tester has plenty of combat units to hold off just those two roaches, especially with force field. He's got a Void around the way. He is Chrono Boosting that Void Ray, I think. No, he's not. He's saving Chrono Boost. Now he's Chrono Boosting the Void Ray. It was being Chrono Boosted. The Chrono Boost just wore off. I am... I don't know what... There it is. There it is, right there. Uh, he's still got a bunch saved up, though, which was what was confusing me. So I guess he's planning on kind of boosting some upgrade lighter or transitioning to some... Oh my gosh, he doesn't have warp kits yet. Just realized that. Uh, and he is actually kind of boosting at a stalker, so he's using that boost and not confusing me. So just to clear that up, he was kind of boosting the Void Ray, and I'm just bad, and all of the Protoss glowy animations kind of look the same on these crappy graphics, which I would like to apologize for. Slush is doing a decent job of spreading creep. You see he's got the overload there, pooping it out just to make those creep tumors spread just a little bit faster, and he's actually getting a little bit of a charge built up on that overload before he goes in to deal with the queen, but it is going to expire because there's nothing 
in between uh, to deal with that. So Tester's uh, just gonna, gonna grab a free queen kill right here. But there are five Hydralisks coming up, and these Hydralisks are going to be more than enough to beat these this Voidray in a straight-up battle. But Voidrays do have very good range, and especially before Hydra range is upgraded, a couple of Voidrays can deal with Hydras very well, as long as they only engage at the edge of a cliff. And that Voidray does get picked off by those Hydras. Those Hydras pop right under it, and even though Queens can't kill Voidrays on their own, they are very capable of uh, Slush actually not pooping out Creep to, to spread this quite as fast as possible. I don't think we don't see the ranges because I'm not him. But it's a little bit interesting. He was using the Overlord Droppy Creepy there, but not right there. Anyway, uh, a second Voidray is out for Tester, and the second Voidray is going to come up, and it looks like he's actually going to snipe these Roaches. Just burn those down really fast. Uh, because of these Voidrays coming up of Tester, Slush is essentially forced into producing pretty much pure Hydras. Because if he goes like Hydra Roach, and, and he makes a few too few Hydras, then. Uh, I'm actually going to watch this just because it's fun to see Roaches die. Uh, because they've got so much health and you never see it otherwise. Um, oh my gosh, he's only killing one. Weird. Because if, if Slush goes Hydra Roach, and he makes a bunch of Roaches and like three or four Hydras, uh, those Hydras are going to get focused down so quickly, and then Voidrays are just going to mop up the Roaches no matter how good the Roaches are against any sort of ground forces. So Tester is in this perfect position where he can just transition ground, and we can see he's doing this right now. He's futilely like, trying to push this Overseer out of his base, but he's just got a bunch of uh, gateways. So hopefully they're going to be warp gates as soon as this upgrade finishes in like two freaking seconds. Um, and then he can just make ground units. And Hydras are, are very, very good against Stalkers, and they're very good against Sentries, but they're terrible against Zealots, and they're also not really very good cost-efficient-wise at, at dealing with Stalkers when you compare them to like Lings, or Hydra Lings, or, or even Roaches. It's just because Roaches are so cheap. Like, they're, they're not They've got a, a bajillion health. They've got like the best health per cost in the game. They've got 145 health uh, compared to Hydra's 80, and they do not more damage, but but kind of kind of scarily comparable damage. Anyway, point is that uh, Hydra's are, are very expensive and very squishy and very vulnerable to zealots or or really any sort of combined armed Protoss force, and they're especially vulnerable to Cloxon or Storm. If we see Tester choose to tack up that high, he's got a bajillion warp gates going down though, so I don't think we'll see that. There's actually a changeling in his base that is so freaking cool. And Tester's moving up. He's not gonna drop a pro proxy pylon at the Zell Nova Watchtower like so many players that I play with do. And I think he actually just uh, slush actually just killed a Voidray right there, and we did miss it. But it's not a big deal that Voidray was just there to push. Slush into making Hydras, or, or at least that's that's what it did. If we pop on over to the unit counting station, we can see that there are 15 Hydras versus 5 Zealots, 8 Stalkers, and 5 Sentries. So Slush is a little bit outnumbered when it comes to raw numbers. He's got one Roach in there, but eh. Um, he's got like 18 combat units now. That two more Hydras do pop versus 18 combat units. But we will see a, a few more reinforcements coming in for Tester. And force fields are so effective, especially with these lower unit numbers just because there, there's not this amazing, amazing army to the point where Slush can afford to lose 10 Hydras or whatever to, to a bunch of, of really, really cool force fields. He, if he loses 10 Hydras, he's out of the game. And we do see a, a Twilight Council coming up for Tester, and also uh, Weapons 1 is coming up for Tester. And Tester is adding on a few more Zealots. Zealots are incredibly effective against Hydras, unlike Roaches, which have, oh my gosh, nice force fields. Just going to couch five, five or so Hydras out of position, and that's far too many for, for Slush to lose. He's just out a third of his army, with nothing to show for it. And and this leaves Tester just incredibly up. Tester is up about 30 food right now. Um, I, I really wish I had seen food right before that battle. About 5 Hydras is about 10 food, so he was actually up about 20 food going into that. And uh, Tester is actually grabbing the expansion of his own. Slush did grab that expansion earlier, as I'm sure you guys saw, uh, but I don't believe I commented on. And uh, Tester is actually getting up a spire behind his, his hatchery, and he's going to force field uh, the ramp for Slush so that Slush can't reinforce, or, or can't main or drones in this case. And uh, Tester's just got more than enough stuff. The Zealots are, are doing an incredible job of alternating e either tanking or doing damage. I mean, they're perfectly fine at doing both. And despite the fact that these Hiders are capable of taking down sentries and stalkers very quickly, they, they're not really doing so. 
even with the spine crawler support, uh, he, there was just no way he could hold off that many things after losing those high to those force fields by Tester. So very, very well played on both parts. We can see that uh, Slush actually was canceling his spire right as the game finished uh, in in some sort of effort to cram out more combat units. But there's no way he could he could reinforce. So very, very well played by Tester. Now I do actually want to to talk for about a quarter of a second about the fact that Slush has 600 gas. This is not good. Slush has 600 gas. This is not good. Um, we're going to go on into game two, and we're going to see what happens the next time these titans of Starcraft meet in a battle. 